So I got a question the other day about lumens and grow lamps, and I realized that there's still some confusion. So just, just to spend a couple minutes on this really important topic, I want to talk about, about this the whole lumen thing. Um, as we know, sunlight has this monstrous spectrum of light, and when we're out in the sun on a cloud, cloudless day at noon, uh, we all get sunburned because there's so much, so much going on, and it's why plants like to grow outdoors. But when we look at what people can see, and we look at the wavelengths that our eyes are sensitive, and as we know, the human eye is sensitive to green and yellow light, we get this lovely uh, photopic uh, curve, and the lighting industry has spent a lot of time creating units of measure, like lumens, that measure the amount of light in this, in this region that people can see. So when we're talking about lights and we're talking about lumens, what we are really talking about is the amount of light the humans can see, which has nothing to do with growing plants. So, if we look at what plants want, and this would be the same axis on the bottom and in, in the wavelength, we see these different spikes, and we see the the uh, um, specific chlorophyll spikes in the in the um, a blue light spectrum, and then over here we see uh, where, where specific chlorophylls, beta carotenes, are looking for for um, you know, very specific amounts of uh, wavelengths of light to do their thing. And in fact, one of the reasons that we see plants as green is because plants don't really use green light, they reflect it. Um, so this big gap in the middle is uh, not usable for the most part for plant material. Uh, this gets complicated when you take the people, what people see, the people curve, which is this curve here in the middle again, and then we throw the, what plants use, which is predominantly blue and predominantly red light. So the plant curve is very different from the people curve, where we start talking about par light for plants versus lumens for people. Okay, so now back to high, the, the question I got the other day about high pressure sodium. So, you know, a thousand watt, you know, high pressure sodium lamp's got a lot of stuff going on. You know, it's got the big filament, it's making, it's getting really hot. A lot of stuff is happening when you're using high pressure sodium. And to the specific question of how many lumens do you get in a high pressure sodium lamp? And here we go, we got a cue, the Dr. Evil voice here. A high pressure sodium lamp has one million lumens. Well, that's not quite right. Um, it actually has less than that, but it has still a whole bunch. So uh, typically a thousand watt high pressure sodium might have uh, 140,000 uh, plus lumens in it, which is a lot. Um, it has to though, because it's, it's producing a lot of light that plants don't need. So you need a lot of lumens in high pressure sodium to, to make it work for plants. And this is why, and this is the complicated curve that the lighting companies won't show you, um, specific to plants. Um, if you take now the par light curve, which we've squished down because we've normalized it to how much light is coming from high pressure sodium in the all important blue blue spectrum. So if you see here where I'm wiggling, where I'm wiggling the cursor, this is now the, the high pressure sodium curve uh, 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 matching up to a par light uh, curve, the, what plants require. And look how much wasted light is coming out of high pressure sodium. So yes, high pressure sodium has a lot of lumens in it, but they're lumens that people see, not plants, and they're not very helpful for plants. So lumens is just the wrong measure for plants. So the good news is we have these wonderful new meters uh, where we can measure par light. Um, and uh, so, but it's also important to know that a good grow lamp likely will not have many lumens in it because lumens just don't matter. What matters is this other measure which is typically called micromoles, or uh, micromoles per meter square per second, if we're getting more specific. But uh, you know, the, the, the better grow lamps uh, um, will have a lot of par light in them, um, and not necessarily a lot of lumens. So again, we have to shift how we're thinking and move away from, away from lumens. This, this is, again, a, a, a fun curve. Now what we've done is we've, now we've normalized the par light curve to match up um, to uh, one of our lamps. This would be the ELPL redshift system. Um, uh, and you can see again, we have a lot, we're putting a lot of light in the red, in the blue spectrum over here rather, and a lot of light in the red spectrum. Um, and we don't waste too much light in the middle, uh, unlike other lamps, including high pressure sodium. 
So I, I, I don't, we don't mean to make it complicated by not answering questions about how many lumens the plant lamps have because it, it's just the, the right answer is lumens are the wrong measure. We like you, as you think about plant lighting, to think more about par light. Um, and of course, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, it's the performance of the lamps that makes a difference. But we look forward to uh, talking to you more about ELPL and redshift lamps.